Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. We're continuing the restoration of the old houseboat here. On this episode, we're gonna get the engines out, see if they're worth rebuilding, or if we need to figure out some kind of other engines to repower the boat with. So let's get going. All right, we got a Harbor Freight A-frame here that we've extended, just welded two I-beams together. We're gonna use this to pull the generator and the engines out of the houseboat. Okay. First up, we're gonna pull the generator out. It's a Kohler 7.5 kilowatt generator, and it stopped making power oh. about a year ago. So we're gonna have to figure out what went wrong with it. All right, so I wanted to see what this pile of crap weighs. 546 pounds. So that is a lot of 1970s iron in this thing. And I guess that's why they say these engines pretty much last forever, indestructible. They weigh as much as a small block Chevy. Crazy. All right, any guess what the 351 weighs? Let's find out. Right. I'm gonna guess this pile of crap weighs 450. I don't think it's as heavy as the generator. Find out though. So, that looks better. 735 pounds. That is a big chunk of iron. All right, so today we're talking about engines, specifically the ones that came out of the houseboat. These are Ford 351 Windsor engines. And you may be saying from our other videos, I thought you were a Chevy guy, but these Fords, they never let us down over 10 years in the houseboat, and we never really had a problem out of them. Now they ran just like an old carbureted engine would, especially with the old crappy Edelbrock carbs on here. So they didn't get very good fuel mileage as expected, but they're dead simple. And so troubleshooting was really easy. You can see how many wires I cut getting the engines out of here. So there's an alternator hot wire, coolant temp sensor, a hot for the coil, a tack output from the coil, and your normal ground main starter wire, and that's it. So if you ever had a problem where the thing wouldn't fire up, it was pretty easy to troubleshoot. Did you blow the one fuse, you know, for the coil, you know, uh, and that's really about it. Now the thing about these is, this one on the right is a starboard engine. It is a reverse rotation engine. So normally the flywheel goes counterclockwise on your normal automotive engines. On this engine, it's a right hand engine. So it spins this way. And they do that so that the propellers, when you have a twin engine boat, the propellers can spin in opposite directions. Because if the propellers spin in the same direction on both sides, the back of the boat would kind of walk in one direction. Nowadays, they do this within the transmission, but back in the 60s and 70s, they just decided to make one of the engines spin backwards. So the problem with that is, for this engine, the starboard side, you've got to have a special starter that spins the opposite way, a special water pump, special distributor, special camshaft, 
And it's not like that's the end of the world, but parts are getting harder and harder to find for these things. They don't even make this distributor anymore. Mallory stopped making it. So it's things like that that kind of shy me away from wanting to keep the opposite rotation engine deal going. They just don't do that anymore. It's done in the transmission. Okay, so here's the second issue. Here is one of the gearboxes. This is the V-Drive out of the houseboat. And here's a little transmission that bolts to it. Now, these are a Borg Warner Velvet Drive. And it's a simple forward and reverse transmission. This is forward, and this is reverse. That's all there is to it. Uh, it's a 2.0 ratio in the gearbox. And you can see here's uh, the other transmission taken apart. And it's kind of like a little baby automatic transmission. You've got your clutch pack here. That's the forward clutch pack. And the reverse is just a couple clutches, but they're pretty simple. Parts aren't too bad for the transmission part. It's the gearbox that's a nightmare. So I'll show you here. Uh, this is the other gearbox taken apart. Parts for these are getting harder to find too, and they're crazy expensive. So here's the chain. They're a chain drive. And the shops I talked to said, when you take these apart, do not hurt this chain. Don't bend it, don't drop it, because this is $1,500 if you can find one. So they said don't break it. The two I talked to didn't even have any in stock because they don't make them anymore. Uh, this gear here, this bevel gear, which is starting to look pretty bad, uh, you can buy it. It comes as a set with the main output shaft gear. This is 3000 something like $3,500. The shops that I talked to said, don't even run these old V drives anymore. Just buy some new transmissions. Uh, ZF makes one. It's a little over $3,000. They're brand new. They can handle 500 horsepower and they're pretty much indestructible. The thing is, if you hit a log or something in the boat, you break this chain, you know, you chip some teeth off this gear. For $3,500 to replace this gear and shaft, you can just buy a whole new transmission. So I'm pretty much convinced it's time for the old V drives to go and probably just part these out, put the parts on eBay. There's gotta be someone out there that needs some parts for these old things. All right, so we've got the engine room pretty much cleared out. It's pretty disgusting. We're gonna have to rip the stringers out anyway and repaint everything. The transom back here is pretty rotted out. So basically everything has got to come out of here. I'm curious what you guys think. We've got kind of an open canvas here. So we could do the old 351s back in here and just pray we can still get parts for those transmissions and that reverse rotation engine. We can do some LS engines in here and save some weight, get better fuel mileage, or who knows what else, some rotary engines, some Tesla electric motors. Yeah, there's kind of a bunch of different ways we could go. So that's what we're going to start figuring out. But we've got to get into the inside of this thing now and start ripping it out. So we've got a lot of work to do before we've actually got to put engines in here. So we'll show you all some more next time. See you all later.